The other day I came across a skip, and in that skip I found this, a speaker driver. And I thought, hey, I can use this for a YouTube video. But it's not much of a YouTube video if I just put it in a box and say, look, I've made a speaker. So I wanted to build a Bluetooth speaker. Not only that, but I've set myself a budget of $1 to build this. Let's see how I do. Before we can build a Bluetooth speaker, we have to understand how one works. So here's a very simple explanation. You have your speaker. Now this is just a speaker driver. On its own it doesn't do anything. You could have one, you could have a thousand. It doesn't matter. They're then connected to an amplifier. Now this amplifier's only job is to boost a signal. Whatever you put in at one end, you'll have the same signal coming out the other, just with more current. That is connected to some kind of receiver. Now this receiver is going to basically take a signal from your phone. And that sends a signal to the amp, which amplifies it and sends it to the speakers. That's all fine and dandy. The only thing left to do now is power it. Bluetooth speakers typically use a battery for this. But you could use whatever you like. You could use mains power, you could use solar, you could use wind. We're going to be using a battery though, because it's easy. So let's see what we can do. For our internal electronics, obviously custom circuitry is completely off the table, would absolutely blow the budget of $1. Same with any circuitry made in the Western world. This means I have to turn to our old friend AliExpress and see what I can get. The board I settled for cost 49 cents and had free shipping. Is that profitable for the company selling it? I highly doubt it. Is the listing still up? No, so it probably wasn't. Anyway. Well, something did arrive. I've taped over my address so you don't dox me, obviously. The packaging is not what I'd classify as good enough to send a circuit halfway across the world, but it seems to have got here. And inside we have a circuit board packaged in what is not an anti-static bag. Inside it we have not the circuit board I ordered. Not even vaguely close to the circuit board I ordered actually. But let's hope it connects to Bluetooth and works in the way that it should. As for batteries, the next part of our diagram, well turns out you can use old disposable vapes. They contain 18650s, although finding the same ones in a large enough quantity was quite difficult. To join the batteries together, I used 16 centimeters of nickel strip. I buy this at $1.50 for 10 meters, which means this cost me just over 2.8 cents. For the clip, I used a single clip, which I buy in a pack of 50 for $4 again equating to eight cents. Please be aware you do have to buy these in bulk if you want to achieve the price I did. I'll come back to the battery in a second. Now it's time to connect the speaker to the main board. The main board had a connection on it which was a JST XH 2.84 and I did use a pre-wired connector for this. I bought these in bulk at $2.80 for 100 or 2.8 cents each. That brings our total down by 3 cents. In order to connect the batteries to the mainboard, we needed some wires, but I didn't want to spend any money, so I cut some off my doorstop power supply. I did decide to spend a little bit of money on 20 centimeters of AWG 18 wire because I just wanted to make sure that I knew which was positive and which was negative on the battery. I buy this at $42 a roll, which is 100 meters, so this is going to take another 8 cents off our budget. In order to secure these wires to the batteries, however, I did have to use one gram of solder on each end which adds another eight cents to our total. I have some bad news. I was testing the speaker and it doesn't work. I thought, oh no, I've wired it wrong. That's not correct. Look at this. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. 
Bluetooth connected successfully. It works just fine, but you have to hold the button down, which leads me to believe that it was supposed to be a toggle switch, but instead they've actually used a momentary switch, which is fine, we can replace it. But that is going to run us another seven cents. And that's seven cents we pretty much don't have at this point. I've soldered the new switch on. Now, it's not perfect. I wanted to reuse the old solder because I don't want to spend any more money on solder. The pairing process on this was a nightmare, but I finally paired it to my computer. Let's test it with some absolute banger of a royalty free song. Even though this song is in the public domain, I received a cease and desist from a third party who thought it was theirs. And I could fight it, but I thought, better not waste my time and maybe get sued. So, sorry I muted it. Now that the speaker works, let's design and build some kind of casing for it. We need a box of some description. And in order to do that, I wanted to do something fun. So I searched online and got the cheapest 3D printer filament available. 10 kilograms of PETG for 41.18. With our remaining 13 cents of our budget, we're going to buy ourselves just over 30 grams of that. Let's see what we can do with our 30 grams of filament. It's Boris from the future here, and you're probably thinking, there's still 1.4 cents left, and you said our remaining 13 cents. Well, yes, we do need to purchase one screw, which you'll understand later on in the process. So here's the basic plan. I'm going to 3D print it with 30 grams of filament on a reel, and we'll see how far it gets. When it runs out of filament, well, that's our model. That's what we're working with. And this is our final product. Got further than I was expecting, it didn't finish. It also crashed into itself when it ran out of filament, which is stupid, I don't know why it did that. But we do have now a model, let's fit the internals. In order to attach the speaker to the housing, I used the forbidden technique where I melted the plastic. What I've actually done here is just cram the batteries in the back and filled it up with the packaging the circuit board came in. Because that is, in fact, sound deadening material, and we have no money at all left. In case you're wondering what that screw was for, to screw the circuit board onto the top. And with no budget at all to secure the switch, I simply melted it into the plastic. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. Bluetooth connected successfully. Well, that was a lot of fun, and we built a working Bluetooth speaker for only... 99 and a half cents or something like that. It was really fun doing this project and I would recommend if you want to follow along at home or try and do this at home, not to follow exactly my steps but try and do it yourself. Try and come up with creative ways to do it. If you do have a creative idea, obviously send it to me because that would be cool and I love seeing that kind of thing. But that is the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, you might like this video where I built a Dyson Bladeless Fan for only $50. Another absolute banger. Or you could just subscribe and then you'll get my new videos because next week's is an absolute banger. And I promise you, you won't miss out on it.